gentlemen joey yeah. bradford of the yeah, use yeah. we're not worthy we're not worthy <laughs> joey how are you sir we appreciate you doing this i'm good i'm good i'm just i mean holy mackerel overwhelmed by technology right now i have like six apple devices open well what was it telling you what was it telling you that that wouldn't work on it I I tried to open it on my laptop and I was like not trying to make a new account for a thing. So I went through the straight browser. Everything was on. All the buttons were on. Camera on, mic on, whatever. And it was just nothing was showing up. Sometimes. But sometimes, hey, here we are. You're here. We appreciate you doing this. For those that may not know who you are, could you please properly introduce yourself? Uh, let us know whereabouts in the world you are and plug anything you'd like to plug. Heck yeah, my name is Joey Bradford, and I play guitar in your favorite band, The Used, and I've been doing that for the last four years, and I manage a bunch of bands, and I run a recording studio, and do everything I can in music, and I'm out here oh, in Vista, California, Southern California, just north of San Diego. Oh, okay, cool. I'm in uh, Victorville right now, Victorville, California. Yeah, up north. I love that. I actually have two used tattoos uh, in Love and Death. I've had them for years, but I want to know to start That's off. Cool. I want to know to start off. What was it like getting the phone call from Bert? Because you were previously in a Static Lullaby, correct? And then you jumped to the used from there. That's hilarious that 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 that's the transition. I I did I did play in a Static Lullaby. We did a or they rather did a reunion tour, and I got to play bass for them, and that was a that was a lot of fun. Um, but yeah, before that, I was in a band called Hell or High Water, uh, with Brandon Saller from Atreyu and Kyle Rosa from Atreyu as well. Um, and we did that for a few years, a few records. Uh, yeah. And we did that, but I teched for a bunch of bands. I, I started out, I sold merch for bands when I was, uh, when I was like 18, I got on the road selling merch for Seosin and Dredge and Thrice and a bunch of these bands. And yeah, I've had kind of a weird journey, but it was, it was still, still insane to get the call to to get to play with one of my favorite bands what was what was that phone call like uh if you could tell us anything about it uh well you know i went and i i had found out that they uh they might be looking for another guy and um the used manager was also managing my my previous band hell or high water so when i kind of found out about the situation i reached out to him to see if i could you know, audition or, or whatever. I was basically like, yo dog, I'm available. I heard, you know, I heard some stuff. I'm I heard ready some to go. things. You know, I heard some things in the wire and I've been, let me jam guitar. Um, but anyway, I ended up getting, getting to try out for the band. Um, and my, my last band, Hell or High Water, we had toured with the used. So we had done a short run with them years earlier. Um, so it wasn't like I didn't know the guys at all. It was kind of nice, like when I pulled up to audition for the band, everyone was like, oh, what's up? Like, we remember you and helped me load my gear in. Like, Jeff came out in sandals and helped me, like, load all my gear in from my truck. Oh, that's awesome. Um, but yeah, dude, it, was, it was awesome. I went and I played three songs with them. We just played, like, one time through each of the songs. And I thought it was, like, pretty rough, to be honest. I was like, well, at least I got to jam with, you know, my favorite band. That's freaking a cool story. Uh, probably won't ever hear from them again, you know. And, uh and yeah, and then Sean Sean gave me my gave me a call, our manager, and was like, "Hey man, are you available to do this tour as the guitar player?" And I was like, "Oh crap, this is real." Whatever and happened to yeah, Quinn well, Almond? Because I missed that somehow. Did he just go into acting? And that's what I'm understanding. He was in. Um, I, <laughs> that's an awesome story. I don't know. I, I don't. I don't believe that he went into acting. I haven't heard that one yet. But, I typed in Quinn uh, Allman and it said he was in like Transformers and shit. But I always grew up knowing that's like, got to be like, a, the a, Love and Death guitarist, uh, right? No, the the used had a song in Transformers. That's what it is. Uh, he totally as an artist in the movie, yeah. which is thick. Yeah, that's sick. hey hey. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe he. I just was, didn't know if you ever knew what movie. happened with him oh, and yeah. why he split. Um, there's like a lot of a lot of different things I'm sure, you know, as being in a band for so many years with the same people is, is yeah. tough, especially like transitioning from 
being a kid into like being a grown up and dealing with grown up shit. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, I fortunately for me, wasn't ever around for any, anything that went down with, with those guys. But, um, I love Quinn. Quinn is a big, big inspiration for me oh, as far facts. as being a player, especially growing up. Like I learned about, you know, delay and and a few things from watching Quinn. Like I was the kid oh, in the a front beautiful row. live so, performer. He oh he never let there be just dry, like a dry spell in a show. Like he always kept playing something to like compliment everybody else. Very cool trick. Yeah, a lot he, of people know. He's a pepper guy. So I'm I personally I'm a huge fan of Quinn as a guitar player. Um I don't know him super well personally, but the experiences I've had he's he's a super sweet dude. So yeah, I don't I have no clue about all the other stuff. I kind of well, just fair like, enough. I didn't know either. I didn't know there was drama, but now we know. Moving on, dude. Moving let's on. let's talk about uh, let's talk about heart work. Heart work to me is is superb. It's probably my favorite album of all time from the used, but it became my oh, favorite when it became my favorite when the deluxe version came out. What what's it like? Oh, awesome! To how many how many tracks did you guys do for the whole album? And is is that all of them that were pretty much demoed and recorded, or is there another like fifteen or twenty that didn't make it? Well, that's it's interesting way that you phrase the question because before we went in to make the record with Feldman, uh, we had gotten together for about a year. The guys were coming out here um, to MySpace and. MySpace, very chill. Um, coming out to my spot out here, and we were writing songs, demoing, like coming up with, with ideas, uh, which was really cool for me because that, that was kind of my first opportunity to get to write with the guys and get to connect and kind of like see how they do it. You know, they've mm. been doing it the same way or together for so many years. I've always worked with so many different people. So we got to spend about a year writing songs. And then once we decided to go in the studio with Feldman, uh, I remember the the first day we go in with John, and I was already like pretty intimidated. Like John Feldman is far more a part of the Yo, what than, a legend than I will ever be. You know what I mean? And, he's done ev every he's album legend. ever by them. Is that is that except for the debut album, correct? Uh, no, he did the album. debut album. He did the he, debut he album also. Artwork. Yeah, artwork he didn't do, and then um, the Canyon he didn't do. But everything else is has been John. Okay. Um, but yeah, no. So we we went in. Um, where was it going? I don't even know where I was going with that. Uh, we were talking oh, no, about talking the deluxe. The deluxe having so many tracks, <laughs> and you said you were recording for a year you before you got yeah, to work. Yeah. So with we went in uh, first day with John, and it was like, all right. So like we got all these demos. I think we had like twenty twenty five something down. I don't know. The number changes every time I talk about it. We had a hundred demos, right? So we go into John, and I'm like, yeah, you want to hear? Like, what do you want to hear first? And he's like, oh, well, I kind of figured we would just like, let's just write a song today and see what happens. And like, yeah, I was like, OK, so like and then to what, this what, day, song what song was that? What song was that? Those demos. The first song we did, what was the first song we did? I think it was. Tell us. Um, let me let me look at the track listing and I'll remember for sure. Bro, we're gonna be bugging you with questions. You better get ready, bro. We're coming at you with bombs, dude. <laughs> I told my resources. So. While you look real quick, <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna, gonna play Cathedral Bell real quick, which is one of my faves from from uh, Heartwork. Did Feldman have any any like studio tricks that you had never seen any other producer do before? Um, he's just like the most efficient. Like his his whole studio and his his workflow and just the way that he is set up is just to not waste any time you know so kind of the ability to capture the creativity in the moment is like insane in his space where a lot of studios it's like you go into a room even if you're writing a song from scratch you know once it comes time to record the guitars and the drums and the vocals and stuff it's like it takes time you got to get the levels you get the compression right you do all these fun things but at John's, it's like everything's always set up. Everything's always ready to go. So it's like, let's cut a guitar. Bam, everything's already set up. Just plug in and go. Let's get to tracking vocals as quick as you can. Um, I think it was just it was just like a whirlwind type of writing and recording environment, which is very similar to how I like to work anyway. Like I'm kind of a bulldozer of a human being as it is. So like getting, in, getting to John's house with nothing and and basically like – starting to talk about a vibe feel what we're dealing with that day and then come up with an idea for a song in the moment 
go grab an acoustic guitar, sit at the piano, whatever it is, Thanks. start a melody, start a concept. And by the end of the day, that song's pretty much recorded and finished. It's awesome. Yo, so I got one for you. So you already kind of established in music before joining these guys, but like, it's no joke. The use, like the four original members, like were all over MTV. They were making huge waves. Like how like real was it for you to like start getting it like, these guys were heroes to you, I'd imagine. Like, are they still heroes to you? Did they become more human when you start to hang out with them? Or like, I kind of want to understand that because to me, these guys are deities. Like, Vermin Crack yeah. is like a whole god. So actually, being For around sure. him, did he become more human, or is he still like a star to you? Yeah, I mean, these guys are all all stars to me. I'm the, I'm their biggest fan. My, you know, Dan, Jeffa, and and Bert are the most unique individual people on their own and the, those dudes like what an incredible thing that they've been able to create including john feldman as part of that yeah. but no i'm still i still there's still moments all the time where i like have to pinch myself and be like what the heck you know are we am i in indonesia playing with rage against the machine like playing guitar for the use this can't be that. real you know like some of the things we get to do it's it's insane and i'm overwhelmingly thankful but to go further, um, I think a having having toured for so long and and played with so many guys, I think there's like there's just kind of this um, I don't know there's kind of this bond between guys that live on the road for their whole adult life, right? Like there's kind of like it kind of it takes away kind of like one layer of of the smoke screen. Um, True. But yeah, and also like we're all dads, we all have daughters, so like when Aww. I when I tried out for the band my daughter was three days old. So it was like, and, and her oh, was just getting shit. ready to go back to Australia to have his daughter. Uh, like a bit of an overwhelming experience and it, it hasn't worn off at all. I'm just, you know, trying to revel in it and and we're loving it. What's your what's your favorite song? Your what's your favorite song in the set that's uh like a classic jam of theirs? Like what's your favorite one to play? Maybe uh, Memories. All day. Maybe Memories. Maybe Memories is a great one. Um I Caught Fire I think is a, a really fun one just because that rift to me is like <laughs> such a every time I played it it's so nostalgic. Yeah, it's like one of those riffs that I was playing in my bedroom when I was learning how to play guitar as a kid. Um, but yeah, that one, Pretty Handsome Awkward, is always that, that always goes really hard. I mean, dude, I, I, as I'm thinking about it, I'm just going to name our whole set list. Like, <laughs> yeah, Box Bowl right. is a trip to get to play. You know, Taste of Ink is obviously, like, there's the a couple one. moments in that song that are just unreal. Like, every time we sing the first verse of that song, it, it's, like, the craziest experience ever. No matter... No matter who's at the show, like we played festivals, you know, we're playing for thirty or forty thousand people. You know, every one of those people don't know exactly who the used is. Yeah. But when that song comes on, everyone's like, "Oh shit, I know this song." I think and that's such a good example. Like cool. the used is such a good example of maturity through music because they started out super wild and like screaming and super heavy, and you just see the production just like mm. climb up, and it starts to get a little more like I don't want to say softer, but like it definitely doesn't have the same punk. Burt throwing up on everybody vibes as it used to. Now we're like more mature about it. And like, is there discussion yeah, into that? Do you guys try to avoid that old sound and like try to keep like this new like persona going? Because it is a dramatic change. No. Well, I will. I, that's what's going to be really interesting once we um, once we get out the next record is I think hard work, especially for me. I mean, hard work is like kind of like my life's work right like that's my beautiful. first opportunity to get to work with the band my first opportunity to work with john feldman like you know the they gave me a lot of freedom like i i felt like i was a an equal member of that this whole project so to get to do the crazy things we did writing like you know there's hardcore breakdowns there's like full-on pop songs like it's just crazy that we got to do a record like this and like only the used could do Thanks. um but that being said i think um the new album that we wrote is like i think it has a little bit more teeth i, I won't say it's like yeah. old school but it's definitely there's definitely like you know they're they're bangers it's like rock jams for the most part i think when uh, when do you guys anticipate yeah uh, i don't know if that's fair to 
No, that's cool. When do you oh, guys? I have no idea. I, I know, Probably I know the end of the year, be, maybe next year. I, I honestly don't know when we're going to put it out. Yeah, probably. No, it'll come out this year, I think. No, nah, send BG and I the lead. Is it already Actually, tracked? You have it right now, dude. Don't it, lie to me. Is it? Is <laughs> it already right now? What's that? Is it already tracked? And did you? Did Yo, you? So here's the coolest thing. Yeah, here's the coolest part about the record. Which again, I don't know if we're talking about this yet or not, but I love it. So I'm going to tell you. Um, Let's go. We basically went. We went into the studio. We finished our tour with Coheed, which was insane. Um, and our manager basically booked 11 days for us at the studio with John, just because we're all in town. We're in. We're in the country. Like we should do something fun, you know. Um, and we showed up the first day, kind of not really knowing what our plan was. Maybe we we're going to write a song or two, come up with a single or something. Um, and then after we wrote the first day, we just like wrote a song. We didn't really talk about a plan. We just wrote a song and we finished a song in a day. And at the end of the day, we were kind of like, yo, what if we just did a song a day and let's do a whole album in the next 11 days that we're here. And, you know, we can, we'll, let's see if we can come up with something that we're ultra proud of song a day 11 days you know and if at the end of it if we're not super stoked like we can go do more songs whatever but we ended up going in in 11 days we wrote 11 songs all of which i'm like overwhelmingly stoked on how they came out it's such a rad record and yeah and and that's that's the whole thing i mean i i i don't know how much further i'll get into it but it's it's i'm really stoked on it it's definitely not the same as hard work in the sense that it's just like this massive journey of an album, but these songs I'm incredibly stoked. To show I cannot people. wait to hear it. Hard work is such a journey. My favorite song on the whole thing is actually night sea journey. That's my favorite track oh, on hard work. Awesome. That, that's why I was saying like when I found the deluxe version, I was like, holy sh there's like 15 more songs. It's like a whole second album. I know. And sound effects and over dramatics. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> um, yeah, the record's crazy, man. And and I don't know if I answered your question, but that's every song we wrote. Like we 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 pretty much did a song a day. You know, if we didn't finish it in a day, we would do um, you know, finish it the next day before we got into another writing session. But that's it. I mean, we were there for like, I don't know, maybe 27 days total, and we how many songs on the record? Twenty, twenty-seven. Like twenty-seven. Was there was there anybody that There's you twenty-seven? Was there anybody that you wanted as because you have a lot of features on this one? Was there anyone that you wanted uh, to have as a feature but it just didn't work out? Um, yeah, you know what? I think we had talked about having um Bear come sing on a song and and it just didn't work out with, with scheduling. There was a couple things that we like. We had talked to Who's some people. Bear? really briefly did you say black, black bear? bear yeah black bear oh black bear yeah. yeah 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 um but it just it was like a scheduling thing you know we've talked with post malone here and there a few different times and just scheduling what? hasn't really worked out what obviously, obviously i, I did not expect to that him. yeah he's i mean he's he's just like this huge guy you know but i don't know if that'll ever you know grow legs but that's been like a, a small conversation you know, we did some All stuff right. with MGK. We got to write a song with him. All right, Joey, if I was going to ask you now on the dream concert date, I want to take you on a date to this concert. What are five bands that you would want to be in this concert that influence you? Who are your top five bands? Dang. Oh, we're going on a, a trip, boo. I would say Jimmy World is definitely one of them. Okay. Um. Thrice has always been one of my favorite bands. Incredible oh, yeah. live band. Oh, man. Uh, Radiohead would make the list. Oh, no nice. Questions How many I got? Two left? Two yeah. more. Ooh. Um, Come on, don't be man, cheap. What kind of... I you know. It's not too shy. Yeah, yeah, I can afford <laughs> this. Let's go. I'm um, paying. <laughs> man. You know, I've, I've seen... Um, Incubus a ton of times, but every time it's just so good. They would make the list for sure. And then who's gonna round it out? Let's pull something yeah, out of the field. The top, who's the who's the cherry on top? I I would say like someone like Sia. I think would be insane to see because oh, her cool. voice is just on another I did not expect level. That. Okay. Yeah, that's surprise. Like hey, I didn't expect it. So here we are. It'll change in the next ten minutes. But that was a cool list. Dude, what what did you think of the When We Were Young festival lineup? 
which I'm I'm totally going to. But what did you think about that lineup? Like, did you, were you aware that this big of of like talent was going to be on the show when when I imagine your manager is booked the youth it on that? Oh yeah, yeah yeah. We, we had heard of we had heard about like um, a big chunk of the bands, which was already pretty crazy. But but to be honest, yeah, like the the entire lineup, I I didn't know the whole like scope of it until we announced it the other day. I was like, oh man, when I saw the saw the flyer and the assets come in. I was like, wow, that is a load of bands. But again, I did Warp Tour for many years, which I mean, yeah. How many, yeah. Was it like a hundred bands on Warp Tour? I don't remember. How so many bands were on This is like Tour? seven or eight stages, a hundred bands, something like that. So they, it, it's very, it's very doable. Yeah. We what, did it for decades. We'll be fine. What song on Heartwork are you most proud of? Ooh. Um, the song that's coming to mind off the top of my head is um, Lighthouse. Um, I think that one just has, was kind of just like a random, really special moment for me where um, we were, we had just had a lunch break and Mark Hoppus was there helping us work on something else. And, and I was in John's control room, kind of like this. Like I was just sitting on the couch with an acoustic guitar and started playing um, the riff that's at the intro to, to Lighthouse. Um, and Feldman walked in. I was just kind of like, I wasn't trying to write anything. I was just jamming on a guitar. Sometimes that's all it takes like, oh, is a riff, man. Yeah, well, and John to have the foresight to be like, yo, hey, let's record that real quick. Just hop in the booth. And like Smart I said, man. everything's always ready to go. So it's like tune the acoustic, press record with a click. And we got that riff and that's, that's what the whole song is, 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 you know, kind of based on that little thing that we started. And then Mark came in and Mark was like, Hey, I have an idea. And then it just kind of took off and we had a song really quick and it's one of my favorites. It's, it's like a, you know, it's a buttery jam. Had do you, have you any sponsors yet? I don't know if that's a rude question to ask or not. Like, do you get sponsors through oh, joining another, the use? Uh, yeah, yeah. I've, uh, I was with, um, well, currently I play uh, Ernie Ball Music Man guitars, and they're the best. They hook mm -hmm. me up. They uh, got a bunch of incredible custom guitars that they've made for me. We play a bunch of different tunings live, so they made me like I have six Stingrays, and I have a, a Silhouette. It's a cool baritone guitar. Oh, that's a good um, point. Is it true that you guys do tune down to accommodate Bert's voice so he doesn't throw it out? Do you guys actually play like just lower keys to help him out, or is that just a rumor? No, that's that's a thing that we do. It's kind of better better way to understand it is a lot of times we'll basically push Bert to the top of his limit yep. when we're recording. Yep. Like you know what I mean? It's like every single song is going to blow his voice out by the time it's yeah. recorded, but it sounds the best recorded. But yeah, when we play live some of the stuff comes down, some of it goes like kind of all it, over the it, place. It so just saves his voice a lot. It's smart. Yeah. I yeah, this I mean, was the first band to teach me that. I never knew about that stuff until I noticed, like, yo, why is this song sound so down? And it just it, it made sense in the end. Interesting. Yeah, it's awesome. It, it just allows us to play more songs and and to tour more and without a puke. Can you still scream stage, like a motherfucker? Right? <laughs> I haven't heard it too much, like in the old days. Like, does he still scream at like practice and like shock you sometimes, or is it so controlled now it's just expected? Yo, I'm not gonna say anything, but. The boy can still scream. Okay. And we got a new record that might have some pepper on there. No, I saying. used to have a shirt that's a little Bert pepper, baby. A little pepper. I was one of the kids wearing that shirt. I wanted him to throw up on me. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. That's super good. Hey, you never know. Puke happens, man. Let's hey. play. Let's play a little bit of the lighthouse, and then uh, if it's okay with you, Joey, we'll do maybe. Are you down to review like a band or two with us of oh, uh, some, lo some, some local, some local up and be an honor. some local up let's and coming yeah, bands? Yeah. Let's try. Uh, bands. Well, I do want to play a little bit of Lighthouse real quick. Rockstar. Who are all the bands that you manage? Yeah, I was picking up rocks today. Hey. Who, What's that? Who, who are all the bands that you manage? Uh, I manage a band from Seattle called Dragged Under. They're on Mascot Records. Insanely awesome band. They just finished a second album. It's coming out soon. Manage a band called Dead American with Cove Reber, who used to be in Seosin. Yep. Oh, uh, nice. They have a two new singles out their record's going to be out february 11th and they're on the velocity tour uh we got outline and colored they just signed to thriller oh, records yep. they're making a record right now they're awesome band out of oklahoma 
We got Royal Tusk from Edmonton, Alberta, and they are also just finished a record. Incredible band. Uh, they're like a classic rock band. And then I have The Undertaking from San Diego that is like a hardcore band, and they're on Solid State Records, and they're getting ready to make a new record soon, too. So as their manager, if we wanted to book any of them, I'd, I'd have to go through you to set up that interview for those bands. You just give me a call, dude. We also I got, got you. I almost forgot. And I almost forgot. The brand newest addition to Moniker Management is Imperial Tide. Insane hardcore band from Vegas, which you should check out. They're we'll check them out right new. now. We'll check them out yeah, right now. I was going to say, do it right now, BG. Imperial Tide? Yeah. Imperial Yo, Imperial Joey's going to change our life for us, bro. He's going to get us all the good interviews. I got He's gonna show bands. Bert my song. He's gonna get Outline and Color on the show. Yeah, like, Outline and Color. We've been fans of them for a while. Th this is the correct, right here. I'm, this is the right thing. Imperial yeah, type. That's the one, dude. Let's check it out. Sounds like there's like a low scream in the dog barking or something going on there. I could oh, be tripping. I maybe I'm. Maybe stop looking for layers. Scream, dude. Maybe I'm tripping. Maybe I'm tripping. But dang. Uh, let's see. Yeah, yeah. Those are the boys. Love them. But yeah, two a million bands. Hell yeah. Uh dude, were you ever a gamer growing up? And if so, what's what's the best video game ever made? I bet you it's not Call of Duty um, Mobile. <laughs> my the extent of my gaming as a kid, I was like N sixty four. I was pretty big back in the N sixty four days. Oh uh, like yeah, Banjo Kazooie. Eye. Yeah, you know what? I was like Star Fox, Golden Eye all day. Well, what do we have back there? Tony Hawk Pro Skater, let's go. I was going hard oh, back yeah. in the pit. Uh, Smash Bros. Well, yeah, I mean, Mario Party. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, I get all things Mario for sure. I recently got a Switch. That's like my my. I'm back in the gaming world, and we got Mario stuff unlocked. Let's go. Yeah, that's a good question. So on <laughs> tour, what do you do for downtime, bro? That doesn't involve music. What is like a hobbies that does not have anything to do with music? I play golf whenever I can, especially on Ooh. tour. It's kind of my new favorite thing. Little is, Tiger Woods. You know, especially Little Tiger, Tiger Woods. Yeah, no, I'm not any good, but it's just something I like to do. I'm usually like up and early kind of guy, and we don't play till late. So I, I, if I get lucky, I'll sneak around and golf in, or, uh, you know, like doing stupid crap like that backstage. But, but it's like the, it's so I'm full of music, man. Like I've managed all these artists is is a full time job. Um, you know, I run a studio even when I'm not here. People are working out of here, so and I do a lot of like co writing with artists and things like that. So I try to keep my schedule like pretty overwhelmingly stacked especially when i'm on tour oh how does someone get involved with you for co-writing what if i wanted you to co-write something for burn like stars how does someone go about that or do we have to be chosen bro uh, uh <laughs> chosen uh you just hit me up man just hit, it hit me with an email and we work out scheduling and see if it works bg let's do that bro it's simple world there emails you, there you go fair enough well, Joey, uh, we we appreciate you, go, you taking man. some time out of your day to do this, man. This was a lot of fun. Heart work, sweet motherfucker. Heart work is phenomenal. Guy. I can't believe we're already gonna get another record here, probably this year. And someday, probably, I, probably. I hope so. This is a lot of fun, dude. Please don't be a stranger. I mean, the labels are gonna make um, you release I'm gonna, I'll, I'll anyway, be chatting so. with you down the road to try and set up a couple of uh, your artists uh, for interviews as well, if that's cool. But um. Sir. Awesome. Love it. Be safe on the road. I'll see you yeah, in October at uh, the When We Were Young show Festival. Bert one of my songs. Promise me. Oh, I'm I'm showing Bert, show. Dude. I'll show him, brother. <laughs> Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, Joey Bradford of the U. Let's go. Thank you, brother. Cheers. Have a great night. <laughs>